so that was kind of a little brief overview of cardiac axis. Maybe you weren't real familiar with it, maybe you weren't quite sure what it meant, and now you have a, a more clear understanding as to the definition of the term. But now we're going to get into it in a little more detail. What you see here is you see um, a picture of the heart and superimposed on top of it is the hexaxial reference diagram. Now the hexaxial leads are 1, 2, and 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF. The hexaxial leads look at electricity as it travels through the heart kind of side to side and up and down and along these angles here uh, as they exist in that frontal plane. Now what's missing are the precordial leads. Now the precordial leads are also known as the chest leads. They're V1 through V6 and they give us more of a circumferential view of the heart, kind of wrapping around the heart. Um, they examine electricity as it moves anteriorly and posteriorly through the heart. Now in determining the mean electrical vector, the cardiac axis, we are primarily concerned with the hexaxial leads you see on the screen right now. The precordial leads do play a role, but it's something different in terms of axis. It's, it's, it's a specific component of axis known as transition. And we're going to talk more specifically about that in a future post. We're going to save it. Right now, we're just going to talk about the hexaxial leads. So, in order to do that, let's review the leads a little bit. Now, we already did that in previous posts. However, um, I want to review it real quick here so we kind of know what we're looking at. When we uh, slap our patients on the monitor here, we actually use real sticky electrodes, the little white pads, uh, and we place one here on the right arm, okay? Then we're going to place one here on the left arm, okay? Then we place one here on the left leg, and then lastly, one here on the right leg. Now this electrode here on the right leg, it's known as the electrical ground, okay? As far as being, um, as far as determining uh, cardiac rhythm, it's kind of out of play. This electrode, the ground, lets the machine know where zero volts is, and it's used as a comparative basis. But in figuring out uh, the hexaxial leads, uh, it's not really used. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look first at the bipolar leads. The bipolar leads are 1, 2, and 3. AVR, AVL, and AVF, the augmented leads, are unipolar. We'll talk about that in a sec. Bipolar leads are leads that use these electrodes as poles, and really the monitor is nothing more than a super fancy voltmeter that watches electricity as it travels from pole to pole. So as electricity travels from this electrode here to this electrode here, that is lead one. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Look here, it most resembles this line here, which is lead one. Then as electricity travels from this electrode here all the way down to the leg electrode on the left side, this electrode here, that's lead 2. Also, it kind of makes sense. Look at that black line I just drew. Now compare it to lead 2. It's kind of on the same line. Then, <coughs> lastly, we'll watch electricity as it travels from this pole here, or electrode, all the way down to this guy, ooh, that's not a very good line, all the way down to this guy here, and that's lead three. What do we have here? It's Eindhoven's triangle. Now, we've talked about this before in earlier posts. It's lead one, two, and three, right here, with our ground being down here. Now, okay, that's all great, so now we have Eindhoven's triangle, but what are AVR, AVL, and AVF? Well, the augmented leads are unipolar leads, and they're called that because they only have one physical pole, which for each lead are these three electrodes right here. The other pole is, is, is made up, it's theoretical, and how it works is like this. AVS, if we all know, is this, you know, kind of bottom lead that looks at the bottom of the heart, and everyone, you know, kind of knows that. But how do they do it? It takes the information kind of garnered from lead one here, and it puts it through this complex trigonomic, you know, equation that you're, is pre-programmed into your monitor, and it figures out uh, the, the kind of the, the average, you know, electrical vector of lead one here, and it places a theoretical negative, in a, you know, call it an imaginary electrode, right here in the center of the chest, right over the heart. And it takes the information it gets from lead one, and now it kind of compares that as it connects and observes electrical travel down to this electrode here, and that's AVF. 
whereas the negative pole is the theoretical negative and the positive pole is this electrode down here and we're uh, observing electricity as it follows from here to there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at lead 3 over here and it kind of averages all that information together and places the theoretical negative over the heart and we uh, observe electricity as it travels from that theoretical negative up and to the right over to this lead here and that's how we get AVR. Then we take a look at lead 2 here okay and it kind of averages all that information together places the theoretical negative over the heart and we watch electricity as it travels from that theoretical negative up and over to this electrode here and that's how we get AVL. Okay so there's your hexaxial leads and how we get them in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about the augmented leads, go to the uh, blog post at www.hippocratesworkshop.com and read the augmented leads post or just the general post on leads. And you can read all the ECG stuff and kind of uh, bring you up to speed to where we are now. But now that we kind of got an idea of what those leads are and, and how we get them, let's, uh, let's take a step back here and erase all this stuff. And now let's talk about access, okay? Let's talk about what we're here to talk about. So. We know that, and I'll bring this over here, and I'll just place this yellow arrow, the arrow over AVF, okay? There's AVF, all right? Then we'll bring another one over here, and we'll place it over lead one. Now, when we do that, we get a much clearer picture of the fact that the hexaxial diagram kind of cuts the heart up here into four equal quadrants, where each one of these quadrants is... 90 degrees okay each one of them and you can see here lead one is zero degrees all the way down to AVF here at 90 degrees 90 to 180 and all the way around each one of these quadrants is 90 degrees so of those four 90 degree quadrants that that's where our access can our cardiac access can land and it tells us different things about what's going on in the heart let's say for example we have let me bring this guy over here a cardiac axis that looks like this. It's kind of down into the patient's left, okay? Our monitor can figure that out for us, whereas it looks at all the little electrical vectors all kind of going off in the heart. It averages them all together and says the mean average path of travel or the cardiac axis is going this way, down into the patient's left and falling in this quadrant here. There's a word for that. We would call that a normal cardiac Access, okay? It, think about it. It's kind of intuitive. You've got the SA node up here, and it fires down into the AV junction, travels over Bachmann's bundle, depolarizes the atria, goes through the, the a, um, AV junction, down in the bundle of his through the Purkinje fibers, depolarizes those ventricles, and boom, you get a nice, beautiful cardiac access down and to the patient's left like that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's normal. That's to be expected. We would see that in a healthy heart. So what are you going to see if you have a normal cardiac axis? Well, you're going to see that the lead that most resembles your axis, which is lead 2, is going to have a nice, positive, big wave deflection like that. Um, that's why we say uh, you always start with lead 2, because if you have a normal, healthy heart, you, it's the lead where you'll see the most discernible P waves and the, and the nicest, most positive deflection. It's also why we say check AVR and very early on because if you see that AVR is uh, not AVR should be negative and if AVR is positive then you know you very well likely may have your electrodes on wrong um, but yeah but look the opposite of the axis the one that most reveals the opposite direction of our axis is AVR so we would expect that to have most definitely a negative deflection on our machine here like that so that's kind of the reason why but it's not always normal you know there's pathologies out there and as we all know uh, hearts aren't always doing what they're supposed to be doing so what happens if when you place your monitor on your patient you see that you have a cardiac axis that kind of looks like that the monitor knows that you've got all this uh, electricity firing off in the heart and when it takes averages of it it says the mean electrical path or axis of that electricity is headed up into the patient's left like this well, there's a term for that as well, and we would call that left axis deviation. So if you have left axis deviation, what are you going to see? Well, the lead that most represents, that looks the most like your axis, is AVL. 
So in the case of left axis deviation, you're going to have a nice positive wave deflection on AVL. And what's the lead that looks the opposite of it? What's the lead that's kind of looking in the opposite direction of your axis? Well, it's lead 3. So in the case of left axis deviation, lead 3 will be negative. OK, now there's two more quadrants. And you can probably kind of, at this point, figure out where we're going with this. But let's just make sure we go over it real quick just so that we got it. What happens if we place our monitor on our patient and we see that we have a cardiac axis like this? that the mean electrical path of the electricity in our heart is going down into the patient's right like this. Well, that is called, you probably guessed it, right axis deviation. So basically, what's happening now is uh, there's some sort of pathology going on, and it's sending the average of the electricity off in this direction. And we're going to see in lead 3, which is the lead that most resembles our axis, lead 3 is going to have that nice positive deflection. And what's the opposite? What's the lead that is going in the opposite direction of our axis? It's AVL. So the AVL would have a negative deflection in the case of right axis deviation. So we got right, we got left, we got to normal. So what will we call what's left? Well, what's left would be an axis deviation that kind of looks like this. OK? And if you ever see an axis that looks like that, that is known as extreme right axis deviation. And it's rare. You're not going to see it very often. I wouldn't say never, but you're not going to see it very often. Um, that's why we say if AVR is positive, your electrodes are probably on wrong, because the only other option is extreme right axis deviation. But in the case of extreme right axis deviation, AVR would be positive, and lead 2 would be negative. So we'll remove this here. And now we see all our four quadrants. And we see all the areas where axis deviation can land. So that's probably a good place to wrap it up for now. There's, there's more to it, but we're going to save it for, for future posts. Um, what we're going to do next time in the post cardiac axis part two is we're going to talk more specifically about what you see with these different axes. We touched on it a little bit. What's going to be positive and what's going to be negative in each deviation. But we're going to delve into that a little, a little deeper. Like, you know, if you're looking at uh, a, a 12 lead strip and that's all you have in front of you you know you don't have the monitor doing anything for you or any complex calculator and you're just looking at somebody's 12 lead can from what you're looking at can you tell what kind of axis deviation you have the answer is yes you most certainly can and it's not that tough and we're going to go over it in uh, cardiac access post 2 the next one to come out we're also going to talk about the pathologies. I mean, you have a left axis deviation. You have a right axis deviation. Why? What's going on? Is it bundle branch block, uh, ventricular rhythms, MI, hypertrophy, dextrocardia? There's a ton of more stuff. So which deviations cause um, which pathologies? Or vice versa, rather, which path pathologies cause which deviations? So in the meantime, that's it for cardiac axis part one. Uh, be sure to tune in for Cardiac Access Part 2 when it's posted. If you want to know when it's posted, go to HippocratesWorkshop.com and put your email address in the subscription uh, widget. Just type it in there and send it on over to us, and we'll make sure we notify you via email uh, every time new posts come out. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, give us some love on the Twitter. Uh, we really definitely would like you to be part of the workshop. So go ahead and leave a comment, like us on Facebook. You know, be sure and hang out. Check us out, www.hippocratesworkshop.com. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon.